Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Nick and in today's video, I'm going to be analyzing Berkshire Hathaway stock after their recent Q4 2021 earnings to see if Warren Buffett's company is a better buy over the S&P 500. If you weren't already aware, 91 year old Warren Buffett is the CEO and chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, which is the parent holding company for all of their investments. For example, Berkshire Hathaway fully owns many companies such as BNSF Railway, Geico Insurance and Dairy Queen, while they have partial ownership in several public companies like Apple, American Express, Coca-Cola, and many others. And since going public back in 1965, Berkshire Hathaway has significantly outperformed the S&P 500, where they track their returns against the S&P 500 in each annual report. As of end of year 2021, the average S&P 500 compounded annual gain, including dividends, is 10.5%, but this is dwarfed by Berkshire's 20.1% compounded annual growth rate over the same 57-year period. But saying that Buffett has only doubled the returns of the S&P 500 over this period is a bit misleading because these are compounded returns. So if we consider what your investment would be worth if you had invested the same amount of money in Berkshire Hathaway stock versus the S&P 500 in 1965, your investment in Berkshire would be worth 120 times more than the investment in the S&P 500 if we look at the value today. However, looking at their more recent history, Berkshire's performance has dwindled to only matching the S&P 500 appreciation over the past five years. And since the S&P 500 does actually pay dividends while Berkshire Hathaway does not, this means that Warren Buffett's company has actually underperformed the S&P 500 over the past five years. So the question now becomes, is it better to invest in Berkshire Hathaway stock or the S&P 500 in 2022? Well, I'll be answering that exact question right after you remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I also wanted to mention if you are looking to become a much better investor and learn alongside several experienced investors including myself, you can join my Discord community of investors for only one dollar in your first month. I post all of my stock trades, we have weekly group coaching calls, you get access to my intrinsic value calculator to calculate the value of stocks. There's so much value in the group, so I would highly recommend it. So if you want to try out my community of investors, you can click the link in the description below to join for only $1 in your first month. Anyways, with that said, let's get straight into analyzing Berkshire Hathaway stock. All right, so to start, I wanted to highlight the four key investments that Berkshire has within their portfolio that they do detail within their annual report, and they like to call it our four giants. First of all, Berkshire has their insurance businesses, which are wholly owned and operated by Berkshire itself. And Buffett always likes to talk about the amount of flow in their insurance businesses, which has grown significantly over time. This is just the amount of money that they've generated from all the premiums in the insurance business that they can then deploy into other types of investments that are higher yielding and make them a lot more money. Secondly, Berkshire's biggest investment is Apple stock. Berkshire's share of Apple earnings in 2021 was $5.6 billion, and of those, they were paid $785 million in dividends. And so Apple now accounts for about 45% of Berkshire's entire stock portfolio. Thirdly, Berkshire wholly owns BNSF Railroad, which is one of the biggest railroads in all of America. And in 2021, the railroad earned a record $6 billion in net income. And fourthly, the last biggest investment for Berkshire is their BHE division, or the Berkshire Hathaway Energy Division. They have about a 91.1% ownership in this division, and it earned a record $4 billion in 2021, being up over 30 times from the year 2000. All right, but moving on to some of Berkshire's other investment categories, they actually have a stock portfolio of about 44 stocks worth over $330 billion. As of the end of 2021, Buffett's top five holdings in Berkshire Hathaway were Apple, Bank of America, American Express, Coca-Cola, and Kraft Heinz, which accounted for a total of 79.36% of the entire portfolio, or nearly four-fifths of the entire portfolio. So as you can probably tell, Buffett is not a huge fan of over-diversification. Even though the portfolio consists of 44 different holdings, the vast majority of the wealth is within those top five holdings, and more specifically, Apple stock, which is about 45% weighted. So if you don't feel comfortable being overly concentrated within a few businesses, then you're probably best investing in an S&P 500 index fund rather than Berkshire Hathaway, where an S&P 500 ETF would also have Apple as its biggest position, but this would only represent about 7% of the total weight. Also, you'd be holding the top 500 companies within the US, whereas Berkshire Hathaway is holding only 44, which is a bit more concentrated, so, that is a factor to consider if you do care about diversification. Personally though, I would be quite confident in Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger's expertise in picking 
stocks since they do have a pretty good track record. All right, but now let's get straight into Berkshire's Q4 2021 earnings report to see if they are a better buy than the S&P 500. So in Q4 2021, Berkshire Hathaway produced net earnings or net income of $39.6 billion. And for the full year of 2021, they had net earnings of $89.9 billion or almost $90 billion, which is over double what was produced in 2020. Now you might be wondering why this net income seems so high, like how many other companies out there are producing $90 billion in net income per year? Well, it's because Berkshire is required to include the changes in unrealized gains of their stocks in net income. It's just like how Amazon reported unbelievable earnings in Q4 2021, but it was largely due to the unrealized gain of its stake in Rivian Automotive that shot to the moon after its IPO. So since unrealized gains fluctuate day to day, we should really only be looking at the operating earnings for Berkshire, which actually came in at $27.5 billion throughout the entire year of 2021 and then $7.3 billion in Q4. So now what I'm going to do is take Berkshire Hathaway's market cap of around $720 billion and divide it by the full year 2021 operating earnings of $27.5 billion, which gives us a price to operating earnings ratio of 26 right now. However, when we check their PE ratio on Yahoo Finance, for example, it's all screwed up since their gap net income includes those unrealized gains within their stocks. So it's always best to calculate it for yourself for Berkshire using operating earnings. So that's it's just a tip. Anyways, if we compare this to the S&P 500 trailing PE ratio currently, we can see that it's cheaper than Berkshire at only 22.4 which is also based on operating earnings. So this suggests that investors are willing to pay more for Warren Buffett to invest their money than they are to put it in the S&P 500, but it also could be because Warren Buffett has higher multiple stocks within the portfolio versus the S&P 500. Either way, Berkshire Hathaway is trading slightly more expensive than the S&P 500, and that's really all we know. But there is one more advantage of being invested in Berkshire Hathaway, and that would be for their boatload of cash. It says here in their 2021 annual report that Berkshire is currently holding $144 billion in cash and cash equivalents, primarily being US Treasury bills all maturing in less than a year. Obviously, this is a huge sum of money not being invested, and Buffett even says that stake leaves Berkshire financing about half of 1% of the publicly held national debt. So you can rest assured as an investor in Berkshire Hathaway that they have tons of cash available to deploy into the market if there are great opportunities presenting themselves. But I personally feel like this is a bit of a disadvantage right now since inflation has been skyrocketing and this will be reducing the purchasing power of all of this cash. But don't listen to me, this is what Buffett said about it in his annual report. From time to time, such possibilities are both numerous and blatantly attractive. Today though, we find little that excites us. So basically Warren Buffett is not making big acquisitions right now and he's not a massive purchaser of stocks at this very moment. He goes on to say that's largely because of a truism. Long-term interest rates that are low push the prices of all productive investments upward, whether these are stocks, apartments, farms, oil wells, whatever. Other factors influence valuations as well, but interest rates will always be important. So since Warren Buffett is not really buying stocks right now in the market, he feels that the most attractive opportunity right now is to repurchase his own Berkshire shares. In Q4 2021, Buffett decided to repurchase $6.9 billion of Berkshire's shares, which was nearly all of their $7.3 billion in Q4 operating earnings. He went on to say, our final path to value creation is to repurchase Berkshire shares. Through that simple act, we increase your share of the many controlled and non-controlled businesses Berkshire owns. When the price to value equation is right, this path is the easiest and most certain way for us to increase your wealth. He goes on to say, I want to underscore that for Berkshire repurchases to make sense, our shares must offer appropriate value. We don't want to overpay for the shares of other companies and it would be value destroying if we were to overpay when we are buying Berkshire. As of February 23rd, 2022, since year end, we repurchased additional shares at a cost of $1.2 billion. Our appetite remains large, but will always remain price dependent. So it seems that Buffett believes Berkshire shares are the best opportunity in the market right now, even despite the stock having risen about 27% over the past year and the stock trading at a price to operating earnings ratio of 26. Either way, I do believe this is a much better opportunity than building up his cash reserves even further, so it's probably good that he's repurchasing these Berkshire shares. However, I do believe there are still some pretty good opportunities in the market. All right, so in conclusion, is it better to buy Berkshire Hathaway stock or an S&P 500 index ETF right now? 
Well, personally, I don't think you can go wrong with either option. I think you're going to make money in the long term, whether it be in Berkshire Hathaway stock or the S&P 500. But if I had to choose, I would choose to put my money into an S&P 500 ETF. And here are the reasons why. As we can see from Berkshire's stock performance chart and their annual shareholder letter, they have underperformed the S&P 500 index by about 49% over the past five years. Now, it is important to note that these numbers are as of December 31st, 2021. But ever since then, Berkshire Hathaway stock has been doing a lot better than the S&P 500. But still, I believe that Berkshire could continue underperforming the S&P 500 for two main reasons. First of all, it's really hard for Berkshire to make the same returns that they once did since their sheer size is approaching $1 trillion in market cap. So a lot more capital needs to be deployed to achieve the same returns that they once did. And there simply aren't that many mega cap companies that Berkshire can choose to invest in. So basically by the law of large numbers, Berkshire Hathaway likely will not be outperforming the S&P 500 by a huge margin in the future. Secondly, I believe that Berkshire Hathaway is lightweight in technology companies other than Apple, of course, which does weigh on their margins and growth. For example, if we look at the price performance of the NASDAQ index versus Berkshire Hathaway stock over the past five years, it becomes how obvious how large the outperformance is when you include more technology companies, even after the recent sell-off in the NASDAQ. So personally, I would rather hold an S&P 500 index ETF that does hold other tech companies like Tesla, Google, Meta, and a lot of those other big ones that should help boost the margins and the growth over the long term. And I also believe that a lot of these other tech companies do have more room to grow than Apple, which is already the largest company in the world. Finally, if I had to add a third reason why I think Berkshire might underperform, it's because of their huge mountain of cash that they have not deployed. Now, I know that in the next recession, Buffett is going to be very prepared and he's going to make some incredible investments that will propel the stock in the future. But I think for the time being, it's actually weighing down on the stock since inflation is roaring higher and higher. Anyways, that's just my opinion and I still love Berkshire Hathaway stock and I think it's one of the safest bets in the entire stock market, if not the safest company to own. But overall, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I've never done a comparison like this between the S&P 500 and a specific stock. So let me know if you want me to make any other videos like this, for example, with Tesla or any other stocks. So if you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And just remember, if you do want to join my Discord community of investors, that link is in the description below. But with that said, I will see you guys in the next one.